Welcome to part five of our six part series all about WebGIS. So in this series, we are focusing on ArcGIS Online and extending the reach of your GIS investment within your organization and beyond. And today we'll be discovering, discussing everything you need to know about collecting data in the field, including looking at the all new all-in-one app called Field Maps, but also Survey123 and Quick Capture. And joining us to present today's session, a very warm welcome to John Hewson and to Jess Phipps, both part of our client success team. So you may have had the opportunity to meet both of them virtually already. Um, if not, you'll get to hear from them today. But let's jump into this. It's a really big topic and I know that the team have made sure that they've covered everything you need to get started with your field work. So with that, I'm going to hand across to John. Thanks, John. Thank you, Laura. So welcome all to part five of the Web GIS webinar series. My name is John and I'm joined today by my colleague Jess to bring you this episode on real-time field data collection. This webinar will be looking at the premier field data collection applications created by Esri from the perspective of a user of ArcGIS Online. In terms of what we will go through throughout this webinar, Firstly, we will cover the different strengths and use cases of the field applications. After which, we will take a closer look at ArcGIS field maps in particular. So this will involve looking at layer configuration, web map configuration, and setting up the field maps project itself. This will be followed by a field maps demonstration. After field maps, we will take a look at ArcGIS Quick Capture, an application intended for rapid data collection. And to wrap up this episode, Jess will take us through configuring a Survey123 project. So this involves creating the surveys, retrieving answers from them, and then performing your analysis. So let's get started. To cover some of the primary differences that exist between the three premier field data collection apps for ArcGIS. Firstly, we have Field Maps. This is a smart form-based map-centric data collection app. It is designed to replace the functionality of ArcGIS Tracker, Collector, and Explorer all in one. The replacement of these now deprecated applications is why when regarding the use of ArcGIS field apps, we try our best to encourage newcomers to start with using field maps. Field maps is intended to streamline and simplify the workflows associated with the field apps suite and having one app to install improves the life of a mobile worker as well as a systems administrator. Secondly, we have ArcGIS Quick Capture. So this fits a specific niche that Field Maps or Survey123 do not. It is intended to be used for quick data entry applications and is therefore button centric. A common workflow would be to have two field agents driving around a survey area with a passenger using Quick Capture on a mobile device to hastily use the larger buttons for rapid data collection, enabling you to collect data in a matter of a few seconds. And Survey123 sits somewhere in the opposite end of the functionality spectrum. Whilst both Field Maps and Survey123 are useful primarily for their smart form functionality, there are differences in terms of features between the two applications. Certain types of user input can be programmed into Survey123, such as calculator or slider widgets for numeric questions. Other differences include layout design and form stylization. Therefore, generally, Survey123 would be the appropriate application for field data collection that may require more detailed or fine-tuned smart form functionality. In terms of the user types licenses required to use these apps, the ArcGIS Field Maps app is included with the Mobile Worker, Creator, and GIS Professional user type licenses. So those licenses will enable users to view, edit, and create map data. The editor user type will allow you to view the maps as long as the field maps add-on license is also applied. The viewer user type will enable you to view maps as well. This webinar is intended to serve as a practical introduction to using Esri's premier field data collection application, that being field maps. So now we shall spend some time discussing the functionality of this mobile application. It is intended to be an all-in-one app its design and ease of use serves to enable field maps to fit most field data collection workflow requirements. 
In comparison to the alternative field apps, Quick Capture and Survey123, field maps fit somewhere between the two with some overlap. Data collection is the primary use case for field maps. Using its smart form functionality, you are able to easily and efficiently collect data in the form of points, lines, or polygons in the field. This also applies to editing already filled data points. Real-time location tracking. This feature is also battery optimized. To summarize how this works, the application will monitor your activity status whilst you are sharing your location. When the device is moving, high accuracy locations are requested by and passed to the app. And when the device is stationary, low accuracy locations are requested. It is simple to configure. As we will see in the upcoming demonstrations, field maps is very simple to configure, only requiring a few steps. High accuracy field data collection and inspection. And you can also take your projects offline for the purposes of collecting field data in regions with limited connectivity. So the features just mentioned are considered to have been part of the phase one release for ArcGIS field maps. Phases two and three are yet to come. Phase two is the ability to coordinate your workforce. So this functionality is intended to replace the features of ArcGIS workforce and will include the ability to create and assign tasks to field workers. This will include a to-do list directly within your map. And phase three will deliver the ability to launch consumer navigation apps like Apple Maps or Google Maps directly from the ArcGIS Field Maps application. This will bring the advanced navigation capabilities of ArcGIS Navigator into Field Maps to enable users to get turn-by-turn -turn navigation using your own map content. There is no release date for phase two or three presently. Generally, the workflow for setting up a field maps project may be described as follows. Configure a hosted feature layer and then set up the layer within a web map. This can be hosted on ArcGIS Online or your enterprise portal. Secondly, you want to go to the web configuration page for your field maps project. Here you can select the relevant web map and then configure your smart form which is what your field workers will be interacting with in the field. And at this point, you can load your field maps project into your mobile device and perform your desired workflows out in the field. So, as we've just mentioned in the previous slide, the first stage of configuring your field maps project is to configure your hosted feature layer. In this case here, we are creating and defining our own new layer which contains three different geometry types, being points, lines, and polygons. Afterwards, you should add your required fields to the layer. And if you need, you may add a list of values, otherwise referred to as a domain. These are required values when filling out one of these fields. You can also choose to use a feature template to assist you with this. Here we have a short demonstration of how one can configure their feature layer for use in field maps. So as we outlined previously, we create the layer within ArcGIS Online and we're giving it three layers with varying geometries being points, lines, and polygons. Afterwards, we title the layer and save it into a folder if preferred. You can also add summaries and tags. After allowing the feature layer to save, we will then go and add our desired fields. ArcGIS Online will prompt us to go and complete the newly created hosted feature layer, suggesting that we go to the data tab, which is where we will go next. In this instance, we're planning to add two arbitrary fields titled color and age to each of these layers. So we go into the data tab and add a new field. Here we're keeping the data type as a string. And for the age field, we're using the integer data type. For the points layer, now we're going to go into the color field and apply a list of values, otherwise known as a domain. This will constrain the list of acceptable values for the color field to three options being red, green, and blue. 
At this point, the feature layer is prepared for use within a web map. So let's press onwards. The next stage of this process is configuring your web map. You may do this by opening a blank new map in the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer, or by opening the newly created layer directly within a map viewer. Then proceed to apply styles and custom symbology to your layers, if you please. You will then wish to configure your pop-ups and lastly, ensure that you save your web map. In this stage, the user involved in setting up the web map will need to be using either a creator, editor, or GIS professional user type. Here we may see an overview of the configuration of the field maps project itself. We can see project settings pages, such as streaming settings and location sharing, as well as feature collection settings. Here we can see the smart form configuration page, as well as the template setup. Smart forms are the interactive forms that one uses when they are collecting data. This can be populated with radio style buttons and lists or enable workers to collect strings of information. Templates as shown on the right side image are used to pre-fill fields as to enable faster data collection for mobile workers. Here we can see the process of adding the hosted feature layer to your web map. Notice that I'm browsing to my personal content directory and adding the layer direct directly. Now the point line and polygon layers are present within the map and I am proceeding to change the symbology as to have each of the layers visually unique within my project. Ensure that pop-ups are configured according to your needs as well. This will help when you proceed to configure your form. And after having applied all of your desired symbology changes, save your project. So I'm titling this web map field maps one and saving it into a folder. Next, you can open the field maps browser interface. Select configure next to the web map you have just saved. And then once you click the drop down and open up one of your feature layers, you can select convert pop-ups. This will populate the smart form with the pop-ups that appeared in the layer within your web map. This creates a great ease of use. So then set up any required templates to enable more efficient data entry. Notice here that I am creating three templates for the point layer, each with a different color value, but the same age. So red, green, and blue for each of these templates. Then confirm that the settings for your field map project are set as intended. And at this point, the project is already prepared for use in the field. Making sure to save any changes that you make to your pop-up preferences and smart forms. Here we have a handful of screenshots of the field maps app in use. So firstly, you can see the layer selection page. Here you may select which layer you wish to collect data for. It presents you all of the templates you have set. The data collection page, so this is where you can input values for the various fields within your layer. That is the second image. And if you had set a list of values for any of the fields, the third image is what you may be presented with. So this enables you to choose one of the acceptable values Here we can see the visual of when you select one of your data points. So it allows you to scroll up on the page and access the edit, copy or delete functions. Or you can also collect here to apply a new data point to the very same position. You can also favorite your points. So here we have a screen recording using the Field Maps application on a mobile device to collect data points. So this is what the interface will look like. You have the option to attach files and take photos. So here we're giving a demonstration of what it appears like when we go to enter different data points and geometry types. So I'm creating two points here. Notice that I have the ability to change the age integer as well as change the color option that is already preset within my templates. 
I'm now creating a line feature with three vertices and filling out the required fields. I'm now going to go and create a polygon feature. Notice that it initially starts drawing from my position, but I can go undo, undo created point and start from a different location. So that's a seven vertex polygon and inputting the required values. And here we go, we've gone and created several points for three different geometry types within our field maps project. We can also toggle visibility for the different layers. Notice that we can turn each of them off or toggle individual layers separately. So I hope that was a valuable overview of how to configure and use the ArcGIS field maps application, both in the web interface and the field. So now we'll move on to Quick Capture. The setup for ArcGIS Quick Capture is similar to that of field maps. However, in this case, you do not need to configure a web map, only a hosted feature layer. So for this setup, you will create a new layer and then set your fields and create lists of values if necessary. After which you can import the layer into your Quick Capture project and customize the layout and buttons interface. At this point, it's already prepared for use in the field. So it's a more streamlined and simple process than setting up field maps. As I've just recently gone through a demonstration of setting up a hosted feature layer, here we just have a screenshot of the process undergone for this instance. And in this case, we're just making one with a point layer. There is no need to be using a line or polygon layer in this instance, as it doesn't lend itself very readily to the workflows of using quick capture to quickly capture points as you move past them. This may become more clear through the demonstration. And as soon as you've created that hosted feature layer, you can then access it within the pro project configuration page. So as quick capture projects are more simplistic than field maps ones, there is less need for customization. You can change the presentation of this page by changing the colors or borders of your buttons, as well as simulating what it might look like on different devices like iPhones or iPads. In this case, you can see it's an iPad there. Once you save this project, you are able to load it into your mobile application. Here we can see a run through of the setup for a quick capture project. So this is what it looks like to create that hosted feature layer. And we're then going to go and add one field titled severity, and this will take an integer value. We're going to create an index of pothole severity ranging from one to five. So for that, I'm also going to create a list of values because those are the only values I want them to take. And at this point, it is ready to be imported into Quick Capture Designer. So we'll go and change tabs now to the Quick Capture Designer interface and import our new hosted feature layer. As well as creating a new project in the process. So now we're configuring the button user input for the severity field. We will label it on the interface and also make it a required user input. So whenever collecting a data point, you will have to set a value for this severity field, making sure to save when you do so. Then just taking a moment to go and customize the symbology and presentation of this page here, applying a custom symbol to the image, as well as just changing the fill and border for the button's colors, as well as the size. We'll also make it mandatory that the user provide at least one photo with a maximum of five for the project when collecting a point. And at that point, once you save and select share, you can gain access to the QR code, which will allow you to download the project directly to your mobile device, which is where we'll take this next demo. So here we scan the QR code and immediately you gain access to your project. Upon opening it, this is what we are presented with. We'll select the button to collect a pothole. That's quite a severe pothole. We'll assign that a severity value of five. And done. 
And there's a second pothole that we will collect data for as well. I believe that also warrants a five in terms of severity. And done. So we've collected these two points. If we now go select the base map icon in the top right hand of the screen, we can go and browse to the locations of these newly collected points and select send, after which the hosted feature layer will be updated with the values that we have presented and the attachments will also be delivered. So I hope that was the beneficial overview of how to set up and use Quick Capture. I'll now pass on to Jess to give us an explanation of ArcGIS Survey123. Great, thanks John. So as John has touched on, uh, ArcGIS Survey123 is a complete form-centric solution for creating and analyzing surveys. The working in with surveys in Survey123 involves a three-step workflow and the 123 in its name actually denotes the end-to-end -end philosophy of the product. So first we will create a survey and this can be done in the web designer or if a more advanced formatting is needed in Survey123 Connect, which supports, supports a large amount of XLS form specification. Second, we will get answers either in the web app on an internet browser, or we can do it through the field app on a mobile device. And we can also integrate it with other apps such as our ArcGIS field maps. And then the third step is to analyze those results, which we can do in the Survey123 website. And our answers can be represented as charts or graphs to aid the interpretation and help us make decisions, or as raw data that we can then use in some of the other ArcGIS apps as well. So the first step in the workflow is to create that survey. And with Survey123, we will create and share a web-based smart form. This smart form not only enables you to ask questions, but also gives you options to customize the behavior of those questions. So we'll take a look at how we create a survey. So we log into the Survey123 website and we click on the new survey option in the top menu. Uh, they can be created from scratch or based on pre-configured templates. So this has created our smart form and we'll start by setting up with an appropriate name, add some tags and a description, and then we're ready to start adding and configuring those questions. So when a question is selected in the middle of the screen, you can edit it from the menu on the right hand side. And from the add tab, you can see the available survey elements, which you then drag and drop into the center to add. And you can also pick them up and drag them to rearrange. So there's no coding necessary. It's a nice, easy uh, beginner user interface that we're working with here. That's a good idea to make sure you save as you go. Questions can be configured for multiple types of responses. So such as time and date, a single or multi-line text, as well as single choice and multiple choice, uh, where we set pre-default um, answers. Uh, we can also tick the allow box here to add in if we want users to be able to add an extra answer that we haven't thought of. So you can see the user interface here is quite simple and intuitive. Uh, we can also ask users to attach images or audio files. Um, we can also set up how we want those captured, either directly in the camera or browsing through images in their gallery. We can also collect GPS coordinates by adding a map question into the survey. And we can design that map, uh, selecting a different base map, also selecting, selecting the extent that will be shown. And we can set questions as required to make sure that that question has to have an answer before the user is able to submit the survey. So once you're happy with your survey, it's saved and ready to go, 
Before publishing, you might want to change the appearance. So we have a number of colours and images available. But if your organisation had some custom colours that you worked with or you wanted to add in a logo, uh, that's available to do as well. So once you've published, you can then share your survey to get those answers. You can do that using a QR code or a direct link as well. The workflow to get answers, you can find the QR code or the link to the survey by clicking the share icon in your survey menu on the top right hand side. You can also adjust the settings for that survey in this collaborate tab. Some considerations that you might want to keep in mind is whether this is open to the public to be able to fill in or if you want to limit it to your existing organisation members. So with the survey, users can access that either in the field app or the web app. So the field app that we have in the centre here, this is available for iOS and Android mobile devices. With the field app, surveys can be completed offline and those results will be uploaded when they have an internet connection again. And the web app is simply opened in a web browser. The web app does offer functionality that is not available in the field map, uh, such as displaying that thank you screen when the survey is completed. Oops. And then our final step in the workflow, and that's to analyse your results. So as surveys are completed, those results will become available to the survey author immediately in the Survey123 website, as long as those users that are submitting are working in a connected environment. And you can visualise your results um, of your survey in the Analyze tab here. And this page will summarise your data in the form of charts and tables, and that will provide insight into your survey responses and help you start identifying some of the trends that might be there. You can use this uh, navigation pane on the left hand side to hide and show questions as well as quickly navigating to specific questions in the survey. You can also filter your responses and you can do that based on uh, the content or the date that's been submitted. Uh, the visualizations available for each of the questions will depend on the question type. So they can include charts, like we've got a pie chart for this uh, instance here. Um, we can see there's also column and bar charts available, as well as a map. You can also have things like word clouds, uh, image galleries, um, and of course we've got our map here on the right hand side. We can also download our results into a variety of formats if we want to continue to visualise and analyse them, including a CSV or an Excel file, a shapefile or a geodatabase. So that brings us to the end of our Survey123 section. So before we wrap up, I wanted to direct you to our WebGIS resources page that will help you navigate everything that is WebGIS. So there's a lot of resources here to help you extend your work by taking ArcGIS Online into the field uh, with purpose-built field apps, as well as analysing and reporting field data after it has been collected. It's also got some more information on how you can integrate with ArcGIS uh, dashboards and ArcGIS story maps. And we will have our sixth and final session for this series coming up in two weeks, and that will be on the 29th of September. So thanks everyone for your time today. I'm gonna hand back over to Laura now and see if you guys have any questions for us. Thanks, Jess, and thanks, John, as well. So a fantastic session, so much to cover, but um, all um, very relevant and great to, to go through all of that. So, <clears throat> so questions now. So we have had a couple that have come through. If you haven't had time to do so because you're watching the demonstrations, um, there's still time to do that. So you can do it in the questions pane. Um, but let's quick um, kick off. So. 
We have a question from um, Tracy who asks, um, asking about smart form functionality. Um, how to choose between field maps or survey one, two, three. Um, John, I might hand that to you. Yeah, sure, thanks, Laura. So one good way to tackle that question would be to consider the offerings of one app versus the other. So by that, I'm referring to how field maps does not offer some features that Survey123 does, such as various widgets like calculators or sliding scales, numeric keypads, um, the ability to attach sketches to your records and collect signatures, and dynamic question labels, meaning that they change based on previous answers. So those are each things that Survey123 can do well that field maps can't necessarily perform. And some features that are offered by field maps that are not available to Survey123 include feature attachment settings. So you can attach videos to records, modify attachments for existing records, and edit multiple records at a time. So those are some key features that I would be looking at when figuring out whether I would prefer to use field maps or Survey123. Thanks, John. Um, next question um, that's come through from Tim. Um, so the question is, um, so for the work we do, we need to record locations with higher accuracy than we have on our phones. Can we use our GPS receiver with these apps? Um, Jess, I think that's a good one for you. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, when you do need that higher accuracy and, and reliable coordinates, a professional grade or higher accuracy GS, uh, GPS receiver is definitely the best option. Uh, you can configure those external receivers to work with your field maps and survey one, two, three. Something to keep in mind is not all receivers are compatible. Uh, so the receiver must support the um, NEMIA sentences. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, so we can send you a resource that goes into some further details about which devices are supported. So you can configure that with your field apps. Okay, um, great, thanks. Um, so next question. Um, so this is from Alad who asks, um, in Survey123, can results be sent directly to a chosen email address? Um, so an example here is um, if there's a hazard report checklist made, can this be sent directly to say the health and safety officers inbox who might not be using Esri? So those results that you showed, Jess, can they be sent across to um, someone who doesn't use Esri products? You can set up automated emails from Survey123. That is done through what's called a webhook. So that is actually a third party uh, workflow software. Uh, the thing, things like um, in Integromat is one possible option. And that's, you set your workflow through that, uh, that webhook. Um, so again, that's something that we can send you some resources on how to do, as that is done separately from the Esri software. Thanks, Jess. Um, and yeah, I'll grab that link and we'll make sure that um, when we send out the recording of today's session, we can include that link in there as well. That's really good. Um, Craig asks, um, how do you integrate Survey123 to make it available in field maps? Um, John, I'll hand that one to you. Yeah, so that's a pretty common workflow. We've seen a lot of users seek to integrate Survey123 surveys with field maps via pop-ups. So for those who may not know what we're getting at there, you would click a polygon feature within field maps to view the pop-up, and then the custom pop-up displays a URL to launch a Survey123 form, and then pass certain attributes to Survey123. So the user would then fill out their survey, submit, and field maps would reopen via a callback to the spe specified map. So we can go ahead and provide some documentation and community posts that exemplify how you would achieve that functionality. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Um, 
Scott asks, um, how can I arrange for a customised training session delivered at my workplace for our staff? That's definitely um, something that we could look into. So um, Scott will send you um, an address to reach out to the team to organise that. Thanks for asking that. Um, okay, next question um, from, from Julie. Um, can you um, edit multiple features at a time in field maps, but not in Survey123? Yes, that is the case, Julie. So, I mean, I would like to fact check myself. I'm pretty confident that that is one of the primary limitations between the two, as in, in field maps, you can edit multiple features simultaneously, but that's not the case for Survey123. As in, you can only edit a singular record at a time for Survey123. I hope that clarifies. Thank you, John. Okay, um, so Jeff, um, next question is from Jeff, who asks, um, can the navigation function in field maps work when offline um, and off track? Um, John, actually, I might hand that one to you as well. Yep, so you can prepare your maps for offline use, as we've mentioned earlier. Um, in terms of tracking and navigation, so once you've turned tracking on, the device will continue to record your tracks, and once you get an internet connection again, they will be able to upload them. So until that point, it will show up as pending, and you'll have to click to upload your tracks. The Use of navigation will, it will be functional and you'll be at the mercy basically of the reception in your area based on how well your GPS will be able to um, determine where you're properly positioned within that offline map area. But I'll be glad to get you some further documentation on that to clarify that question. Thanks, John. Um, Jess, here's one for you around surveys. Um, some of the surveys we will be doing have a long list of possible answers, maybe a few hundred possible answers. Um, when we create a survey, do we have to manually enter all the answers into the web form? And that's from Ben. This would be a situation where you'd want to be using the survey one, two, three, connect to design the survey over the, the web designer. Um, in that spreadsheet format, you can either build your long list directly into your schema, or you can also link it to an external spreadsheet for your choice list. So if you already have that list existing, you can just link to it. Um, and it's also quite useful if you want to use that same big list for other surveys and for other projects is that you can just refer back to it. Um, there's also additional formatting in Survey123 Connect, and that's going to allow you to make it easier and improve the performance for your end users when you're working with those long lists. So you can do things like adding a search bar that's only going to display relevant answers so that they don't have to load that entire choice list um, and using up a lot of that um, internet. So we, there's some really great blogs that go into this in quite a lot of detail and have demonstrations and step by step. So we'll send that out as well, um, sort of help you get started with that setup. That would be perfect. Thank you, Jess. Yeah. Um, Craig asks, um, is Survey123 app still available as a Windows installation? Um, John, I might hand that to you. Yeah, sure. I believe it still is, yes, as a installation file available from the Survey123 resources page. Excellent. Um, and um, one last one from Craig again, um, asking whether field maps um, is multilingual um, like Survey123. Um, I'd say if it's if it's not now, it, it would be, but um, do either of you know whether that's the case yet? I cannot comment, sorry. I don't know off the top of my head either, I'm sorry. Yeah, Craig, you but know you'll... we can you're... definitely get into that. 
Absolutely, Craig. I, I know you use um, field maps and surveys a lot, so we'll we'll find out about um, when um, I can imagine the multilingual will be available. Thank you for your questions. Um, okay, um, Peter asks whether we can send um, a GPS device compatible sheet. Um, I think there might be a resource online for that. Yeah, there's. we do have a link that uh, has the requirements for the, those GPS receivers. Excellent. Um, Peter, we'll reach out to you directly. Um, and I know you are wondering about who to ask around more technical questions. Um, so you can also at any time reach out to support at esriaustralia.com.au and they're always a good port of call to get started with your questions. Um, okay. Um, Meg has a question here. In survey one, two, three, are you able to export reports um, as an automated Word document? Jess? You can create a template for your reports to export. Whether that is an automated process, I would have to have a look into that. Okay. Whether that can be done. Okay, excellent. But you can definitely export reports, that's possible, yes. Okay, great. Um, so, um, John, this one would be good for you. So it's coming in from, um, from Doug asking, um, you mentioned mobile workers can use maps offline. Can we still track them offline? Yes, Doug, yep. So once they've turned tracking on, the device will store all of that tracking data during that session. And once you re regain that internet connection, they'll be presented with the ability to upload them. So those tracks will remain on the device whilst the upload is pending. And once you've selected to have that data uploaded to the tracking layer, it will be deleted eventually. So if you do sign out before having uploaded those tracks, they will be lost and can't be recovered. So it's important to ensure that you do manage to fully upload those tracks prior to signing out of your app. If I could just add uh, to something else yeah. on to the end of that as well. Um, it is important to know that once you do have those tracks in ArcGIS Online, they're valid in there for 30 days. So after 30 days, uh, those tracks will disappear. So if you do want to uh, keep them and keep working with that specific track, it's a good idea to export those as well to a file. So you can export them to a few different file types. Um, but just be aware after 30 days, um, they'll be gone from online. Thanks, Jess. Good extra tip there. Um, Peter asks, um, can you take GPS um, in, that's in um, one datum and have field maps convert it into another datum? That's a John, good question there. Sorry, I'll yeah. have to do a fact check on that. Um, yeah, I can't say off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Yeah, and there might be an extra step with that in terms of just changing the datum before sending it off to, to field maps. But um, if you could check that, John, and we'll, Peter, we'll, um, we'll come back to you on that one and we'll also send out any information um, through to our post-event email as well. Thank you. Um, and I've just got um, one last question. Um, that's coming from Craig. Um, can Quick Capture be configured with multiple buttons, for example, um, left and right for road, road surveys? Yeah, absolutely. So the demonstration I went through in this session was a fairly um, simple and limited application of Quick Capture, and you can certainly create multiple buttons on one page at a time. In terms of the specific button layout for Quick Capture, if you are referring to the idea of being able to put buttons um, so that they're split down the middle, as in columns, then yeah, you can have a grid of four by two buttons if that's what you were aiming to do within Quick Capture. So you can have it have a large number of buttons available on the screen to enable. Yeah, as we've said, rapid data collection there. I hope that clarifies the question there. Excellent, thank you, John. Um, 
Now that's, um, we've come to the end of our questions and thank you everybody. So many great questions and well done John and Jess. The breadth of um, knowledge to understand there. So um, lots of information that we've covered today. It's been really good. Pleasure, Laura. Thank you everybody. Now, thanks um, Laura. Thanks guys.